Welcome to the Fantasy Rugby Draft Podcast. Thanks for downloading listening. I'm Bruce Wilkinson and joining me in the booth today is the man primarily made of moss, Nathan Mossman. Welcome. Thank you, Bruce. Fantastic to be here. It's uh, FRD Towers. Love what you've done with the place. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Mossman's been a foundation member of uh, Fantasy Rugby Draft. He uh, he brings, I'd like to say, a wealth of fantasy knowledge with him as well as a, a wealth of rugby knowledge. Uh, we, we won't hold his chief support in this against him. In fact, at, at one point in time, it was an asset. And it, as it still will be this season, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure it will be too, now that SBW is back in the mix. Um, in today's podcast... Um, We'll discuss fantasy in general. Uh, we'll proffer some tips and strategies for fantasy rugby draft, uh, how not to blow out in a live online draft, which in itself is a pressure cooker situation. You've got 90 seconds on the clock to make your pick. You're picking your team for the season. You'd be surprised how stressful that situation actually is. Um, this is our debut podcast, so you'll have to bear with us. Uh, I'm sure there'll be some gremlins and some formats that we need to, to work on over the, over the coming months, but uh, bear with us. I'm sure we'll hopefully uh, provide some some uh, tips that will help you win your league. Um, a few admin bits and pieces. So you can follow us on Twitter, uh, at Fantasy Rug Draft. That's Fantasy R-U-G Draft. Uh, or follow us on Facebook on Fantasy Rugby Draft XIV. Uh, if you have any questions, send us a mail on support at fantasyrabydraft.com. Uh, that's support at fantasyrabydraft.com. So uh, let's delve right into it. Um, tips around uh, tips and strategy for Fantasy Rugby Draft. Uh, I'll come to you in a second, Mossman, for your tips. But one I wanted to emphasize, and the most important first step, is know your draft day. Know your draft day and draft time. So when you're setting up a league, when you're joining a league... The most important thing to know is when is that league being drafted? At what time is it? Can I be in front of a laptop at that time? If you're setting it up with one of your mates, if you've got eight or nine mates you want to set it up, try and find a time that all of you will be able to access uh, a laptop. It can be done via a tablet um, so that you can all participate in the live online draft. It's a hell of a lot of fun. Uh, It's quite chaotic at times. That 90 seconds really flies by. Um, but in terms of uh, strategies and being able to get into the intricate details of a draft, this is where the live online draft um, uh, is, is, is a great asset. If you've got specific players that you want to draft, if, you've got, um, if you want to watch a flow of the draft, then definitely get into the live online draft. So first and foremost, know your draft day. Now, if you do miss your draft, there is an auto-drafting facilities uh, facility, but you are at the whim of the rankings. Um, so if you have specific players, then you really do need to attend that live online draft. I can't emphasize that enough. Know when your draft date is and know when the time is so you can attend. Mossman, what do you think? What are your key takeaways for Fanny Serenby Draft? Well, I, I guess just the, the whole concept of drafting is probably to a certain extent new to some people. Uh, most people have, that are listening to this have probably played fantasy rugby before, but maybe in the salary tap, salary cap type games. Uh, the, obviously, the yeah. format of this is, is very different. Just understanding the concept that any particular player will only be owned by one team. So it's, it's not like you can just pick, you know, a dream team uh, based on, on that salary cap. You really need to, to target particular players that that you're after and, and their the value that they'll provide in the in the draft. Yeah, that, that's a key point actually. That's a really really good good item that you've touched on there is that in your league only one person can own Dan Carter, for instance. So you are essentially fighting out uh, with the rest of your league mates for that specific player. So if you have a hankering for Dan Carter. You need to make sure you get him early because you know everybody else will be, will be aiming for him as well. Um, so looking at the draft itself, uh, one of the key bits of um, information that I personally use is rankings. So for your draft, you really do need to prepare. So you need to go through all of your positions. You figure out what your top 20, what your top 50 outside backs are, your uh, top 50 midfielders. So uh, when you're in the draft and you have 90 seconds, 
that time evaporates very quickly if you're faffing around trying to figure out who's been taken, who hasn't been taken, who do I think is the next best player, and invariably you will miss out on a player that you want down the line because that 90 seconds will evaporate and you'll be going, who the hell did I pick? So one, one key bit of preparation that I have is a big Excel spreadsheet with all of the rankings um, and all of the players in there so that I know immediately who the next cab off the rank is. And as you're going through the draft, I think it's quite important to uh, put a line through players that have already been selected by other teams. That way you know exactly where you are up to in your rankings. Um, I think uh, there, well, there is a facility in the live online draft by picking the tab uh, called Picks, and you can see an audit of all of the previous picks that have happened in the draft. But a, a it's much easier if you follow along and putting a big black line through um, players that have been taken. And I'd I'd imagine, Bruce, at some point you'll be posting some rankings up, perhaps on the site? Yeah, that's right. So um, we're a little bit at the whim of when the uh, squads are being announced. So the New Zealand uh, Super Rugby squads have been announced, so we've already started our uh, preliminary rankings for that. But South Africa and Australia are a little bit later. Um, they actually don't finalise until the end of January, but we'll be doing our best to put the rankings out before Christmas. So that gives uh, punters over Christmas and New Year period something to take away to be able to go and sit down and say, oh, OK, I see they think this player's here. I disagree with that, but at least it's a starter for 10. Um, what, are one of your, uh, what are your key points for, uh, for drafting, uh, Mossman? So I think I touched on it earlier, uh, talking about value when it comes to drafting. And what I mean by that is essentially it's about roster construction. And it's you're trying to maximize the, the amount of points scored by the whole team. So there's no point in drafting the best player in the game if the rest of your team is full of scrubs. And a lot of that comes down to positional scarcity. There's some positions where once you get past the top guys, there's actually not a lot to choose between any of them. So you can wait on those positions, draft those guys late, and you're not going to lose a lot of production. Uh, for example, if you were to draft a loose forward in the first round of your draft, you probably have not understood what I've just said. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I think that's, uh, that, that's, that's, a, that's a key point as well, is knowing your audience, um, knowing what their makeup is, how skilled they are at the draft, how many times they've done this before. For example, picking on your, your loose forward uh, example, let's say Nizam Kar. If you're drafting with a bunch of South African Stormers supporters, chances are he is going to be one of the earlier round picks because they they know Nizam, they know his play, and they know how productive he can be. But if you're drafting with a bunch of New Zealanders or Australians, you can afford to, to keep that in your back pocket, knowing that you've got a valuable player down the line, but you can feel fairly comfortable that he won't be drafted in the first few rounds. So it is about knowing that value, when that player is going to fall, or when you think that player is going to fall, and then draft accordingly. Um, and, and tagging on the back of that, each draft is different. So you can't come in with a set rule to say, right, I'm going to get bang, 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 this player, this player, this player, or this position, this position, this position. You'll end up in a tangle and you won't be getting the best value out of the draft. Um, You don't want to have a preconceived idea. You want to look at your rankings and you want to go best available player. What you don't want to do is get caught up in a run or a fury if there's there's five or six um, picks before you that all pick midfielders, and you feel as though, oh my goodness, you know the the the, the lack of midfielders. These guys are all selecting. Oh, I need to select a midfield uh, in that position. It may actually be more productive for you to say, look, I actually don't think the sixth next midfielder is 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 the right option here. I'll go to another position and pick the next top player there, so I can try and outscore them in that position. It's difficult to do, isn't it, Mossman, when you're in there to hold your bottle? Oh, absolutely. And uh, just further to that, I think sometimes if you'd look at the stats, for instance, and you'd see that fly half is generally the highest scoring position, don't be fooled into thinking that you necessarily have to go for a fly half immediately. If if that position, there are a lot of guys who, who can actually get you points, then you can wait on that position. There's, there's going to be a fly half uh, maybe in the next you know, a few rounds of the draft you can go for. Look for those guys that are so far ahead of other guys in that position that that essentially they're, uh, they're must-picks. 
Yeah, absolutely. Great call. Great call. Um, and a little intricacy uh, of, of fantasy rugby draft as well is that once we designate a player in that position, he will stay for that position for the entirety of the season. So based on the squads that we talked about previous and based on the information from our data provider, we allocate positions quite early on in December which can fluctuate quite wildly over the next coming few months. So there is value in certain positions to see. Uh, a good example was Tiboha Mahoji, and I'm pretty sure I've pronounced that incorrectly. <laughs> oh, that was fantastic. Thanks very much. Um, but he's now playing on the on the low, on the loose side and the loose forward for for the South Africans. So, and he was listed as lock. So he's going to get a lot of running meters, which is and offloads and a much more of a looser capacity than an ordinary lock would, um, which is racking up some points. So, um, and a few little bit of banter bits in the draft, um, and a few etiquette rules around drafting. So. The number one rule is to make sure that you never congratulate anybody on any pick in any circumstances. This person needs to feel as though he's made the worst pick in the world at every single selection and that it's an issue and that he need to rethink it. Um, you'll hear comments like, uh, is he still playing rugby? Or is he over his injury? Or is he still alive? That kind of comment, it's all designed to, to unsettle the drafter, to, to, to plant the seed of doubt, to, to make that 90 seconds shrink down to as small as you can. So any, any edge you can get in a live online draft, and there's a chat forum in there as well now that you can throw a bit of banter and talk about how it's a terrible pick. Um, any edge you can get, grasp it. Oh, yeah. You'll, you'll want to throw in there just after somebody's pick that you know he's playing for Leicester now, right? <laughs> just to put them in doubt then. That's especially effective, actually, if it's just after someone's tried to draft Andre Taylor, who's, of course, now in Japan. <laughs> That's true. He's not going to score many super, fan, uh, super rugby points from Japan. It's not easy. I can't say he couldn't, but it's not easy. Yeah. <laughs> um. So th- those are our tips for, for the draft. Uh, hopefully that's given you a little bit of insight around um, the intricacies and, and a few little strategies that you can take into your draft. Um, I would say preparation is the key, first and foremost, though. Um, looking back now, just on the on the 2014 Fantasy Rugby Draft season, um, I've got a list of, of 10 players here who have got who, who are studs. Um, Israel Folau... Jason Woodward, Nemanja Ndolo, Bowden Barrett, Bernard Foley, Quade Cooper, Nick White, Mahoje, Malakai Fekitoa, and Lolagi Visenier. Now, Mossman, which one of those stuck out for you? Which one do you like? Bruce, I noticed something last season that John Kerwin didn't. And that's that Malakai Fekitoa is good at rugby. <laughs> I think when you consider the guy's actually a genuine centre as opposed to a lot of the other midfielders that are actually outside backs playing out of position. And you, you mentioned players playing out of position and I'm talking of guys like Tim Nile Williams who would have spent most of the season probably playing on the wing or at fullback uh, or Rob Horn who is a pretty average player to be honest but found himself on the wing for the New South Wales Waratahs and uh, managed to, to make a good fantasy season out of that. Now Fikito is different of course, he actually is a midfielder and it was remarkable actually how productive he was considering that but he wasn't getting those cheap metres running back kicks so I think given that last season was his first at Super Rugby level uh, and he's pretty much made every post a winner since uh, making the All Blacks, I think the question is will he kick on maybe you know to even better things, uh, especially now that there's a queue of midfield talent in New Zealand in a World Cup year, or, or will he come back down to earth and have a bit of a sophomore slump? So I think that's one of the uh, questions for next season. Yeah, absolutely. He, he had a barnstorming, barnstorming season. His ability to, to make line breaks... And, and meters and offloads translated um, directly into fantasy rugby draft points. He was a gold mine. And the thing is, uh, other guys at his position who are probably going to get you 100 points over the season, and, and he's, based on last season, he's going to get you 200, you know, if he, if he can replicate what he did there. So, so he's a long way ahead of the average player at his position. Yeah, and exactly. And that's I'm just looking here. His average points per, per game week was 16.1, and the next best was Damien Delend, 12.6. So that's a whole nother four. That's about 25% better than the second-place person. Absolutely. So, yeah, he, he, he was barnstorming. For me, 
uh, and and we hold our hand up here in the uh, when we did our ranking summit, we heard noises from Michael Checker that um, he wanted his fly half to be the kicker. At that point, we didn't know who the fly half was going to be, so it wasn't sh- wasn't clear whether it was going to be Bernard Foley or Kurtley Beale. Um, it transpired that, that they were going to play them both, and, and Bernard was going to be the, twel- uh, the the fly half. So he took the kicking duties away from Brendan McKibben. Um, Nick Phipps came in and made every post a winner as well, and he set that back line up from scrum half. But for me, uh, as well as um, being uh, being a stud, Bernard Foley was consistent. He was the only player that um, in the fly half position that should have been started in a hundred percent of the game weeks that he played. Um, he was ultra consistent for for all of the the punters that. And there were a few, I was looking at the draft boards, there were a few that saw that coming, even early on in the early January, that actually selected him and put him in their lineup. And he paid dividends. He was he was rock solid, pouring points out game week. And he didn't pick up any injuries either. So he was there the whole season. That can't be said for the other the others, the likes of Falau. Woodward only got the kicking duties late. Nandolo turned up with Fiji a little bit late. Barrett was no good at home for a while in the first three or four games. Um, Foley was the one. <clears throat> um, as as with uh, as with every game, with, we have our studs, but we also have our underachievers. Um, in this list, we have Tom Taylor, uh, Louis Fouché, Frank Halai, Ray Rule, Peter Grant, Peru Wipu, Brendan McGibbon, Richie McCaw, Ben Moen, Luke Romano, Don Bird, and the Chiefs front row. So which which one of those Mossman cost you your chance last year? Well, I had the dubious honour of actually uh, owning R squared, Raymond Rule, <laughs> and uh, yeah, he was a, he was a massive disappointment. Um, as were quite a few of the sort of touted South African outside backs. It's actually interesting that there aren't any South African players in the top ten. Uh, scorers in fantasy rugby last year, uh, only three in the top 20. I don't know if that's some kind of pattern. Uh, maybe it was just the, that particular season. Um, I guess we'll see. Um, I think for me, uh, being a being a Crusaders uh, supporter myself, it was Tom Taylor. So touching on the fact that he was, he was a midfielder and he was going to be kicking goals for all intents and purposes because Dan was away, uh, DC was away, <clears throat> and it wasn't too clear whether he was actually going to slot into 10 at that point because he'd been away with the All Blacks in the Northern Hemisphere, and it looked like he was just going to kick on to be the next you know, the next fly half, and they were moulding him to be that. Um, and through injury, but through also for form, it uh, just didn't transpire, um, and, he, and he didn't get the duties. And, and Colin Slade, when he came on, uh, made every post a winner. He um, he, whilst being fairly uh, up and down in his output, when when Colin Slade was on, uh, he won you your game week matchup. He he put a lot of points up on the board. Um, Louis Fouché was an interesting one. Uh, it was at the point where Andre Pollard was uh, drafted into the squad. The, he he was thought of as the prodigal son, um, but it wasn't clear. Uh, where the coaches were going to go, if they were going to stick with um, stick with uh, Fouché at ten because they got experience a little bit more on it, uh, that, <laughs> that found out pretty quickly after one and a half games that <laughs> that wasn't going to be the case. They uh, got Jacques Louis Potgita in as quickly as they could, and then uh, towards the end um, they started uh, blooding Andre Pollard, which if you looked at the um, Junior World Cup, you'll see what a talent he actually is. So he's certainly one to look out for next year. And actually, also for the rugby championship, you saw the output there. Um, he likes to take the line on. Clearly, he wants to. He's an abrasive chap, um, so which is quite unlike in a South African rugby player. So <laughs> that's true. They're quite reserved normally. Um, so yeah, one to look out for next season about where you draft. Also, uh, when we talk about studs and we talk about underachievers. We talk about free agent pickups as well. So free agent pickups are players that weren't drafted by on anyone's team that came on uh, during the season through suspension or through replacing a, an injured player or just through form. Um, Fikita was a good example of that for, for Mossman. Um, but for me, uh, the, the biggest 
um, Fridge and pick up, or the most impact was Marnitz Boschoff. Certainly from an early point perspective, and if we spoke to the mayor at Coochie Town, he would tell you what a stroke of genius it was uh, selecting him as his fly half. Um, I think he won the first four game weeks uh, of fantasy rugby draft season by himself. Uh, he was uh, incredible with the, the drop kick, but also with his place kicking. Um, and he was duly rewarded with, with a South African berth. So for me, he was uh, he was one that, that it was uh, one of the best free agent pickups of the season. Uh, also on this list is Lolagi Vicenia, Jacques Lewis Pagita, Malachi Thekatoa, Bryn Hall, Nizamka, and Tapohe Mahoje. Um, Mossman, is there anyone else on that list, or is anyone that that, that you thought was uh, a great free agent pickup? Yeah, well, I actually owned Nizamka last season, and he definitely produced. He's he's a really strong ball carrier. Uh, basically, came from nowhere. I hadn't heard of the guy before, and I think it's, it's an example of. And Vicini is an example as well of guys that had come from domestic rugby the season before. If you if you happen to watch a lot of Curry Cup. I can't say that I did. I'm sure there are players out there that uh, people have earmarked that that could be potential stars this season. Vicenia was that guy last year. I, th- I think he he was playing for Auckland and was a bit of a standout, mm. uh, which would have alerted a few people that you know he was up for the job in, in Super Rugby. And I'm sure there'll be people that have come through the the ITM Cup and through um, Curry Cup this year that that may be set to do that again this year. Yeah, Vicini is an interesting case, isn't he? Because when you looked at the start of last season, that back three was stacked full of outside, but you know, sorry, the, the the squad was stacked full of outside backs. If you had Pieta, you had Halal, you had George Mawala, you had Tavita Lee, and Vicinier was like fifth or sixth cab off the rank. And they also had Benji Marshall, which they were tossing around with uh, at that point to maybe be an outside back as well, a fullback. So mm, then, who, never heard of him. <laughs> exactly. So Vicinier just basically shuffled his way up to the top of the list and he was very impressive. He's he's a quite a big chap and he carries the ball and he's willing to have a go. He got a little bit injured late in the season which his output was affected by it where he got injured down in um in the in the Crusader match. But he's certainly one to look at next year. I mean we had Charles Pietau rate us the highest and I think we probably still will do do that again next season. He is uh he is just a, a defender's beating machine um, and in terms of being able to bring back for metres and also have the the want to, to, to cart it back from fullback and not just try and find territory as well. Um, but I think Vicenia will have to find a place somewhere in that back three. Um, I think that's probably about all time we have for today. Uh, we'll be back with a few pre-season podcasts uh, once the South African and Australian squads have been named uh, and we'll take a take a, a look at these in depth. Uh, Mossman, do you have anything uh, anything more to add? Any uh, wise words of wisdom? The only thing, other thing I would say is, is just don't be fooled by the big name on the back of the jersey. Uh, I think you mentioned Richie McCaw, obviously a legend, not a great fantasy player. Uh, there's a lot of other players out there that are like that. I'm thinking of the likes of Jean de Villiers, uh, you know, no doubt a legendary figure in the game, not a great fantasy player. Uh, even somebody like Aaron Smith, mm. uh, probably not something that you need, someone you need to be targeting in the draft. There are other halfbacks who are going to produce around about the same amount of points, guys that don't necessarily come with the big name on the jersey. I'm thinking of the likes of Bryn Hall, these kind of guys, so so don't don't be fooled by the name. That's true. That's that's a great point. Do your research, base it on statistics, have a look at last season, and then bring to the table who you think might fit into your criteria. Uh, a quick reminder again of how to contact us. Uh, so we're on Twitter, uh, Fantasy Rug Draft. That's Fantasy R U G Draft. Uh, Facebook, Fantasy Rugby Draft X I V. Or if you do really fancy a long-winded question, and we love it, we love hearing from uh, from our managers. We got a lot of great feedback last season, a lot of start sit questions that we we sat over in uh, FRD towers for a number of hours trying to figure out who they were. Um, but yeah, send us an email on support at fantasyrabydraft dot com. Uh, thanks for listening. I'm Bruce Wilkinson. He's Nathan Mossman. El Tiorapeto.